shameless persistence says, no, I know I look silly right now. I know I look foolish right now. I know I'm making a mess right now. But guess what? I'm going to be persistent because I really do believe. I really do believe and I know I'm going to get to the end point. I'm being shameless in that persistence. I don't care what people have to say. I don't care what people have to think. I'm going to keep on seeking. I'm going to keep on asking. Hello, hello, hello and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Abby and I'm back with another video. I hope every single one of you guys are having an amazing day or an amazing evening. Without further ado, without doing too much of an intro, we are going to get straight into today's topic. Today we are talking about a topic that has honestly changed my life in many ways and so I thought it was super important for me to share this sort of practice that has helped me get through a lot of challenges and that I truly believe could help all of you guys watching and so today we are going to be talking about shameless persistence shameless persistence is the topic of today and so if you would like to follow along this video with your journal or a piece of paper that is going to be the title that you are going to start this off with shameless persistence and so without doing that long talk without getting too rambly let's get straight into the main points and the main lessons that shameless persistence has to teach us let's get into it as you guys know, and are probably sick of me saying this, I do a Bible study every morning. I read the Bible, I meditate on the word, and the word that I had been meditating on or the phrase that I highlighted on my Bible app was Luke eleven nineteen, And this verse says, and so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. This was Jesus's teaching in regards to prayer. And so when Jesus was teaching the people and the disciples about prayer, this is what he had to say to them. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open onto you. In the context of prayer, Jesus is telling us that we should continue praying for what we want, that we should be perseverant in our prayers. There was someone knocking on the door and ask at the middle of the night asking for, I think it was bread. And it was the middle of the night. The owner of the house was like, I'm not answering this. I don't have what you want. Get out of here. Can't help you. But the man that needed the bread in the middle of the night, 2 a.m., could you imagine knocking on someone's door for bread? But he was persistent in that. Knock, 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 knock. I need the bread. Knock, 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 knock. I need the bread. And Jesus had said, the friend, the owner of the house, didn't give him the bread out of his friendship, out of his loyalty to this person, to the man knocking on the door. But he did it out of the persistence. And so in this story, in this parable that Jesus is telling, we can see that the persistence is what allows and gives us access to what it is we are asking for. He says that when you pray, be perseverant, be shameless, be shamelessly perseverant in your prayer. And through that, you will get what you ask for. Any parent in general is going to give their child what it is they want. They're not going to hear their child say, mom, dad, can I have, um, can I have a, a toy? Can I have this toy? And their parents now give them coal. There, no parent is going to do that. And so what more will God, our heavenly father, do for us in that we ask for these good things? Do you think that he is going to give you coal? Do you think that he is going to give you garbage from what you ask? No, it might not necessarily be that exact same thing that you want. You might not get the toy that you asked your mom or your dad for. Maybe it's out of the budget. Maybe they can't get you that because it's going to take over the house and make a huge mess, whatever it is right? But your parent is going to get you some type of toy, something that is better fit for you in the same way God does that for us. And so we're asking, we're asking, we're asking, not necessarily that we are going to receive that exact same thing, but we're going to receive something that is good for us. We're going to receive something that we need. And God knows that. That's why he is God. That is the morale of this is to be shamelessly persistent. Remember that shameless part, remember that persistence, and remember that humility that needs to be coupled with it. I think this is the most important thing. If I'm being honest, I think this is the most important thing. And I think when we miss the humility, we miss the mark of the parable. We completely miss the mark of the parable because what it is saying or what I'm understanding from it, there's so many things that we don't fully understand. But if we are perseverant, 
if we are humble in our journey, we'll be willing to embark on a, on a path with our faith, right? We'll be willing to embark on a path with our faith and end up exactly where we need to end up. The humility allows us to do that. If we are walking in a state of pride, we are putting on blinders. We are putting on blinders that we only want to end up where we see fit. That is pride. We only want to end up where, where we envision ourselves. That is pride. But with a spirit of humility, we're able to embark on that path. We're able to knock on that door with perseverance and a humility to know that the final destination I have in mind, yes, I'm knocking and yes, I'm moving forward to get there, but I might not exactly end up there. I might end up somewhere better. I might end up somewhere that is more fit for myself, that God sees more fit for myself and my life. That requires a humility, a humility of spirit. I think we need to understand what this word humility means, right? Maybe we should get a definition. Give me a second because for me, that really helps is getting definitions, dictionary definitions, a modest or low view of one's own importance, humbleness. So it's seeing yourself in a modest way in a lower way. And I know that's super countercultural for us today because everything is about loving yourself and bigging up yourself, knowing your self-worth. And I think that's super important at a certain phase in your life. Let's say, for example, you've been through something that's quite traumatic or uh, devastating in your life and you are in those beginning stages of healing. Yeah, you've really got to pour into yourself. Yeah, you've really got to load up on that self-love to bring you back to that balanced state. But once you have reached that, don't stay there. Don't sit in that, right? Don't pass that mark where you end up in pride, where you know who you are, but you keep filling yourself up, but you keep giving yourself these affirmations. That is between you and you. That is between you and God. No one can tell you where you are and when you've reached that balance. And so you need to do this introspective practice with yourself to know when it's time to be humble, when you have loaded up on self-love enough to where now you are called to be humble. Now it's you, you, you're back to you. Your personality is back. Your spirit is back. Your joy is back. You're able to smile. You're able to see who you are. You're able and understand the worth that God has put, in, put within you. Now is the time to bring yourself low. Now it's the time to be humble, to bring yourself low in surrender to God. Because that is how we truly move forward. It's kind of funny how things work spiritually in that there are different phases and, and, and different things called for different phases. But you as the person on this journey, on this healing journey, are the one that needs to be conscious, conscious and aware of where it is you are. Sometimes we don't even realize how hard our hearts have become. The shameless persistence is what we need to oversee our hardened heart that doesn't truly believe. We need to be shown through the persistence in order to believe. You need to be shown through that shame in order to remember. It's important to be shameless because sometimes your persistence is not going to look good. Sometimes you are going to be persisting towards something that seems impossible. Sometimes you are going to fall on your face and look silly, but you need to be persistent in that you still have to get up and you still have to try again. Some people might be looking at you like this girl, this boy looks crazy. Man, why don't they just, you know, take their losses and go back? Why don't they just give up? Shameless persistence says no. I know I look silly right now. I know I look foolish right now. I know I'm making a mess right now. But guess what? I'm going to be persistent because I really do believe. I really do believe and I know I'm going to get to the end point. I'm being shameless in that persistence. I don't care what people have to say. I don't care what people have to think. I'm going to keep on seeking. I'm going to keep on asking. And with that, when you, when you operate in that, that is when you receive. And now remember, right? <laughs> this is where the humility comes in. Remember, what you were receiving is not necessarily what you asked for, okay? We got to be in, in surrender to God's will and that we will receive whatever it is God has for us. Know that, know that what God has for you is good. Well, I'll put the verse here, but I'm going to be paraphrasing for now. And it says, pride comes before a fall. 
pride comes before a fall. And the reason for that, the reason why pride comes before a fall is because when we are operating in the spirit of pride, we're unable to see anything else but ourselves. We're unable to see the context within our life, the way that God wants to use us. It actually says in the Bible that when someone was is operating in the spirit of pride, God takes his hands off of it. God allows them to do whatever it is they want to do because there is nothing he can do for someone working in a spirit, working in the spirit of pride. Their fall will come. And when their fall comes, they will be forced to be in the spirit of humility, you know? If you're willing, you'll be in a spirit of humility where you're looking up and saying, oh gosh, what did I do? I need help. That's where God can come into your life and guide you. But you see how God enters our life when we are low. God enters our life when we see that there is something more powerful than us. This is a spiritual practice that we need to implement into our life, that we need to have in the back of our mind. Be low, be low. Because in the spirit of pride, we're unable to see ourselves. In the spirit of pride, we see ourselves through the lens of perfection. And we cannot keep moving in life that way. You will fall. You will crash. It's a principle, you know? I can't explain how it will happen in your life. Everybody's life is different and everybody's situations or struggles are different. But this is why a principle is a principle. Because it applies to all every situation, this principle applies, right? It's like mathematics. There's mathematic principles that are inherently true, right? What is it? Y equals MX plus B. That is the formula. That is the principle that everyone has to follow because, I don't know, was it Einstein or someone declared it to be true through their studies and whatever? It's a principle. The same way in life, there are principles, Pride comes before a fall. That is a principle in our life. I want to thank everyone that has come this far in the video. I appreciate you. Um, I encourage you to write in your journal some of the things that you are wanting to be shamelessly persistent in. What are the things that you are praying? In a way, this could kind of be your prayer request. What are the things that are laying on your heart that you desperately want an answer to? that you desperately want God to answer. Sometimes it helps to actually write these things down instead of letting it cloud in your mind. You know what I mean? And so write down your prayer requests, write down the things that are heavy on your heart that you want God to hear. This is your own practice. And so do it on your own time or pause the video here and write down your prayer list that you are going to be shamelessly persistent in. What is it that matters most to you? What is it that you are truly seeking in this season of your life? Write it down. Write it down. Keep it in your journal. Pray about it regularly. Don't forget to come back to this journal entry in the future a couple months from now to remind yourself of what it is you are requesting, what it is you are seeking, what it is you are praying for. Sometimes the beauty of journaling is that we can come back to it and we can be reminded and we can remember or we can look back and say, oh yeah, I did pray for that and this is what came from it. God is good, right? We can praise him in 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 um in the works that we see him do in our life. And so that is the practice for you guys to do today. Before we end off this video, I just want to read some of the comments from the previous video that I posted because you guys are lovely. You guys are amazing and your comments genuinely like uplift my spirit. So I'm going to be reading some of your comments. The warrior healer says, thank you so much. I tr- This truly ha- helped me gain more stillness to silence the overthinking and anxiety, to just tune into the inner voice that was crying so softly in defeat and confusion. I did the journaling while watching the video and it was amazing to just connect with myself so passionately. I love to hear that. To truly believe that I will always have me by my side. I will always have my back. No one can take me away from myself. A whole treasure that is, a whole treasure that it, that it's deserving of so much love and care. You are truly divine blessing. Take care. Thank you so much, the warrior healer. It's amazing to hear that this journal helped you connect with yourself because sometimes 
we already have the answers. Sometimes we already know what it is that's that's there. We just need to have that practice to connect with ourselves and allow ourselves to express. And so I'm so happy that this journaling practice did that for you. Thank you. Anna9192 says, thank you for all these words. I really needed that today. Just worrying and overthinking. It's incredibly hard sometimes to give the control to God. Absolutely. Absolutely, Anna. It is incredibly hard to give the control to God because in essentially what that means is that we're now out of control. Um, but I'm glad that you are aware of that and that you watching these videos means that you know, you're looking for something deeper. You're looking for a way to potentially give God that control. And I feel like that's the first step. And so don't be so hard on yourself and know that everything is a process. Okay. And the last comment that I'm going to read is from Serena, S Serena Sejour. Serena Sejour. Are you French, mademoiselle? She says, I definitely needed this, especially in the season of trying to find my identity in Jesus and not the things of this world. Amen. Amen to that. Identity in Jesus and not the things of this world. I think that's so important. And honestly, I feel like I should do a whole video on that because... There's so many things that I see in our culture, in our world, and I'm like, whoa, if I didn't have some type of like religion, spirituality, something to kind of reel me in, some type of anchor in my life, I feel like I would be so completely lost. And even still having this anchor in my life, I still find myself getting lost. And so it's like, I can't even imagine what some people are, are how they kind of navigate the worlds without, um, trying to have an identity in Jesus Christ and not the things of the world because man, the world is crazy and man, social media tells us to do a whole bunch of craziness and man, social media tries to, you know, tell us what is right and what is wrong and how we should think and how we should go about situations. And let's be honest, that noise of social media is so loud. The noise of social media is so loud because it has been so integrated into our lives, right? To the point that we have our phones with us 24 seven, TikTok, Instagram, even YouTube. Sometimes we've always got it on us. And so We've got to have that balance in life and know where our identity comes from. And so that's amazing that so that, that is something you are actively trying to do, myself included. We're, we're on this journey together for real. Um, so thank you. Um, I think that's all that I'm going to do. This video is getting quite long. Um, but as always, comment down below your thoughts your ideas that came up while watching this video. If you are up for it, definitely share what some of your prayer requests are, what some of your, um, what you wrote in your journal, right? About your shameless persistence. What is it you're being shamelessly persistent in? Maybe someone can read the comment and relate to it, you know? And so if you feel up to, up for it, definitely leave everything in the comments below. Um, I'm trying to think what else I have. Oh, also, guys, I recently started a weekly newsletter, um, and so I'll leave the description in the box below where you can sign up to receive my weekly newsletters, and basically, I'll just be giving you guys tips on things or just some things that we can like read up on in regards to health or wellness or spiritual health or anything that's really going on. It's kind of just like a news feed. This week's news feed was centered on tips for journaling. And so you can definitely check that one out. You can sign up for free. Just click that subscribe button and, um, that's all you got to do. So if you're interested in being a part of that newsletter and being a part of that, um, regular community, definitely sign up. Um, I'm rambling. I am going to slowly leave because if I don't, I will keep talking. <laughs> so peace and love. And I will see you guys next time. I love, 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 love each and every single one of you. Be blessed. See you later.